Hello and welcome back to KNF Design. If you're new here, my name is Katie and I just wanted to officially announce that I did adopt Lily and Callie, so you may be seeing them here in the future on my Facebook and Instagram, social medias, and even here on Instagram in some shorts. So give me a like and down below and tell them congratulations on getting adopted. Today, I'm going to set these two down here. There you go. Oh, bless you. Today, uh, we're going to be making a unicorn uh, shaker. And this one is a piece from Dollar Tree. So I'm going to show you how to use this to create a shaker. And I even have a design for you, which you can find down below. As well as if you can't find this cutout of wood cutout from Dollar Tree, I also have all the pieces so you can make a shaker without it. I'll just be using some foam, so I'll show you both methods. Um, don't forget to hit the subscribe as well down below so we can keep crafting. With that, let's get going. So first up is our acetate, and um, before we get cutting, just make sure you make all of your um, designs the size that you want so if you're doing just the wood cutout and putting this acetate layer over it from the wood cutout from Dollar Tree you need this acetate layer to be 5.594 inches high and 5.011 inches wide that way it fits it exactly the others you can kind of do whatever size you want um, but that's kind of roughly the size I'm going to be doing for just my uh, shaker as well. Um, for my acetate, uh, I am leaving the protective layer on it just so when it cuts, it doesn't scratch my acetate as much. Um, because it's a basic shape, it should be fine. But just be careful because the uh, protective layer will prevent it from sticking as much. So if you have trouble with it cutting, then maybe try taking off the protective layer. I also use a layer to make sure my acetate is on my mat well. Um, so I'm just using acetate setting and more pressure. For my glitter code stock, which is going to be the decorative layer on top, it's mine's pretty thick. Yours doesn't have to be, but mine is, so I'm doing heavy code stock setting on more pressure. Um, I'm going to check, see if it cut all the way through before I unload my mat. If it, I see it's not cutting all the way through, then I'm going to hit go again and just run it twice. So that's something you can always do. Um, I also like to use a blayer to make sure my cardstock is adhered well to my mat so it doesn't come off. It's a little hard for you to see, but I just pulled up the corner here and it looks like it cut it nice and well the first time so I don't need to do my two passes. I'm just going to unload my mat. And for all my material, when I unload my mat, I'm just going to fold my mat upside down and then your pieces kind of come off by themselves. And that way you don't get all of the bending of the paper. Next is my foam. And I actually have a foam that on the back side here has uh, an area that you peel off and it's sticky. Um, if you don't have that, you'll just have to either use some double-sided tape or glue to attach your foam, but the foam that comes with the sticky is kind of nice. For my foam, I like to use my rotary blade since I have a maker. If you don't, the um, standard blade that I just took out can work. Also, make sure you move these star wheels off to the side so they don't roll over your foam or it will create little lines in your foam. I also like to use the flannel setting and I'm doing regular pressure the default. Has just a little bit of trouble with the small detail, 
but I think that'll be just fine. Um, this mat probably was a little too sticky. I thought it was a little bit more used. So um, this is that layer of protectant from the back of the foam. Um, so it's the sticky doesn't get everywhere. So it did stick and it's pretty stuck onto my mat here. So I'm just taking my scraper tool and it'll help get it out. So I think next time I might use a blue mat for the foam just because of that backing it has. This is our last layer. It is actually the first back layer of the shaker. Um, so I did switch to a light blue mat just since my green one was pretty sticky. And I'm just doing medium cardstock. More pressure. Oh, I forgot to change my blade. And it'll tell me here that it's the wrong blade. These are fine here, but if you wanted to smooth them back, you could. Okay, so here's all, all of our pieces cut out. We have a back layer of white cardstock is what I chose, a foam, which is a uh, layering area just to get us some height so our glitter can move around. If you don't want to use the foam, you could use a card board or a craft board, even just layering up cards dock, depending on how thick um, your pieces are inside your um, shaker. Depends how many layers of your cardstock you would need. Um, I don't like doing that many layers, and I actually like using the foam because it's sticky all the way around, so it helps make that nice um, um, seal for glitter. And then we have our acetate, and this is just that top layer that's going to make it all look nice at the top. So since my sticky is already showing, I'm actually going to go a little bit backwards and place my back piece here. Um, also, just watch out with the foam. It does stretch easily so don't stretch it out now you do see the little lines here but that's okay that's why we have this piece it's going to cover all that up so you won't notice it so that's kind of what a unicorn is going to look at like um but we'll need to do the acetate and then that so a glitter can't escape So for the wood piece, the first step is to paint it. And I think I'm going to do the unicorn's body white gold horn and then kind of try to do a rainbow with its mane. Um, I've picked out some different colors and to go with my glitters. I'm using this uh, Christmas one I got from Hobby Lobby. I'll be using the green, two greens and maybe the red one. Um, and then I also have these little packets of um, 
glitter that I got from Dollar Tree. So I decided I did not want to try to match the colors exactly. So like here's the pink I'm gonna use with that glitter. That way it'll show up well. So here are the colors I'm going to be using. Yeah, I'm about to fade away Cause every time I wake up I feel like it's Monday Something's going wrong with all the chemicals up in my brain All of a sudden I don't look at anything the same way Got a build up of my thoughts sitting in an ashtray I'm sorry that I'm so inconvenient, okay Just let me be me and I'll stay out of your way I can see the way you look at me, I'm such a disgrace I never really asked to be brought into this place You wanna love me? Well then baby, have a taste All the highs and the lows no, you'll never be the same I don't really want to hurt you But I can't control the pain If you're sticking by my side Maybe we could be okay Okay, okay Maybe you could be the change I need today I promise that I've never felt this way I really hope that you Will choose to stay Through all the pain I know you told your friend You're not okay And tell me what's wrong And why you never said You felt that way Try to stay strong and fake a smile until I look away But I've known you too long, it hurts to watch your blue eyes fade to grey As you fade away Okay, now that our unicorn is all painted, I just need to add all of my glitter inside. I'm going to be doing different glitter, like I said, for each section of the unicorn. And then I'm going to use this glue because it dries nice and clear. And that way you won't see it when I place my acetate right on top of our unicorn after the glitter is inside. Now, acetate is usually very staticky, and when it's static, that means the glitter will not shake and move around as much. So I'm going to be spraying it with, this is just from Dollar Tree, a glass window cleaner, and then I'll dry it off with just a paper towel, and that should help with our static. Um, I've heard people say to use, use dish soap, but a lot other people say that doesn't work very well. And then I've also heard of like dryer sheets because that removes the static from your clothes, but that can scratch the acetate. And then I've also seen people use alcohol on like a cotton swab, but I don't really like the smell of the alcohol, so I prefer to use the window cling, window glass cleaner. So that lets add our glitter. Once a 
the day that I would pray for you I'd go and misbehave just so you'd notice too Sneaking looks up and down from across the room and Damn, what a hell of a view I feel good, you look great I like you, I can't wait Our first time, our first day You're so fine, I'm so late You sip wine, I drink straight Don't waste time to my place I feel my heart erase So catch me if I fall So here are our two unicorn shakers and um, just a side note on the wood one here, I noticed that the wood, there's two different layers and they must not have uh, been flat, they were warped when they glued the two layers together. So there was a little gap here and all my glitter had fallen out of certain sections, or most of it. So I just applied um, some glue in those little gaps and that seems to be holding the rest of the glitter that didn't fall out in there. So if you do get any of these wood cutouts, just look for any gaps. It, again, it was only in like a couple little spots here. The rest of it didn't have the gaps. So just look at that when you go and buy it and if you see any uh, just fill it with some glue or something before you put your glitter in it so you don't make a mess. But um, other than that, I think they turned out really cute and fun. Um, I think I'm kind of liking the one that's made out of wood just because it has a little more color. My husband liked this one, the cardstock and foam one just because it had more glitter to it. So let me know down below which one you like better. And until next time, happy crafting!